<laughs> cool. All right, so we're here in office hours, uh, November 16th, two days before the midterm two. So we're talking about how to draw the stack out, for instance, here at location one. So we have a function main that defines an array, it's called C, of 0, 5, and 10, has another local variable D, which ha is calling foo and passing in C of A. It calls foo, foo does a bunch of stuff, then we're printing out A, C, and D. Inside foo, foo sets A to be 0. Uh, a is going to be A plus 1, B plus is equal to B plus 1. If B is less than 20, then we call foo again. Otherwise, we go to location 1, and we're going to call uh, return B from foo. So the question is how to draw the stack at location 1. Right, yeah. Before we begin, yes. is, is the assumption that we're doing pass by value always on this one, unless otherwise identified? It, it should always be identified. If it's not identified, you should ask. Okay. So yes, pass by value. Um, because that actually, yeah, that would kind of change how you drew the stack a yeah. little bit. Have we even so. done it? Have we even done pass by reference on the stack? No. Okay. So I would say you'd probably safe in saying that will not be on there, but you never know. <laughs> Throw a little curveballs in there. Um, okay, so we know what's the topmost function frame that's going to be on the stack? Main. Main, right? Because that's where we operate yeah. from. I want to have something on the stack. Does main have any parameters? So what things go on the stack? Parameters and variables. Parameters and what kind of variables? Local, local variables, exactly. Right, local to the function. Exactly. OK, so what local variables do we have here? Int c. Int c and? Int d. Int d. So we have two local variables. Question, though. Yes. So where would the global go if we were tracking the entire stack? Would it just go up in the stack up above main? Or Completely off the stack, not in the stack at all. I mean, not, it, well, it's in memory somewhere, though. So Correct. memory wise, would it be somewhere? Uh, it's technically memory? below, it's below the heap by the code segment, but oh, we don't show so that. that's Way not close something to exactly. Zero, zero yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's why we, we don't draw it, because it's really not in what we care about for the stack. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah, so this A2, right, that sets A somewhere wherever it is, that global variable to be 2. Because right, the stack is always changing, but A, the location of A never changes throughout the entire program execution. So therefore, we're never going to change right. A. All right, so we have C and D as the, as the variables inside of main. So we know we have C, and C is an array, so we'll just kind of draw it like we have it here. So it's 0, 5, 10. And then we have D, or maybe I'll we have D, do we know what the value of D is? No, right, because we're going to call foo. Right, so we have no idea what the value of D is. Okay, we're going to call foo, and we're doing pass by value. So we have C of A, what's the value C A? What's A? Two. Two. Exactly, two, and then what's C two? Ten. Ten. So we're going to call function foo and pass in ten. So this is all main's function frame right, right now. Hello? We're going over an example of function frames uh, here. OK, so we call foo. So now we have a new function frame on here. Does foo have any parameters? Yes. B, what's the value now of B? 10. Yeah, 10, because that's what we passed in. Exactly. So that's going to be 10. Uh, how many local variables? A. Exactly, A, which has the value 0 at the start. Cool, and then we just go through and execute this. So we say, okay, A is equal to A plus 1. So which A is this? The internal A. Internal A, not this global A, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we said A is equal to A plus 1. So we're going to change that to be 1. B is equal to B plus 1. So it's going to be, what, 11? Should we show that it changes, or should we just give you the final result? Uh, all I want is the final result, but okay. yeah, it's good if you show what changes, because that would be that'll be good. Yeah, it'll help us track. And now that I see I made a little mistake here, we're going to change this to be like 12, 13. It was 20. Now it's 13. 
So don't do it as many times. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> I don't want to draw all those stacks. Um, okay, so we just incremented b. Now we say is b less than 13? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to call a function foo and pass in what for its parameter b? 11. Perfect. So we know we're making a function call. So we know this is is which function frame? Foo. All right, now we know we have a new function frame. It has its parameter, what's the name of its parameter? B. B, what's the value? And then it has a local variable? A. A, which value is zero. So this is this next invocation of foo. And so it sets A to zero, which we've done. It increments A, so it says it's one. And it increments B. So now it's 12. It says, is B less than 13? Uh, yep. <coughs> so we're going to go in here. I'm going to call in foo again. So does everybody see why this statement here, when we we're in this function frame, uh, this B does not affect this B? Right? Mm -hmm. Because we have passed by value here. So this parameter is a brand new copy of that variable inside this call for foo's B. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we, okay, so we just called foo again, so now what's this, so we have, we know we have the parameter b and the local variable a, so what's the value of the parameter b? 12. 12. And the value of a? Zero. Zero. Increment a, increment b, and remember we increment this b, not any of these other b's, right, because it's just, because uh, we're only, this foo can only access the variables here. So this b increments in here to 13. And we say, is b less than 13? No. no. So we go to the other one. We say location 1. Bam. So this is our stack. So we only do it up to location 1 then? Exactly. Okay. So on the first execution of location 1. So you don't need to do it anymore after that or anything. Uh, okay. All you need to do is to make sure it's up to there. So if, let's say, we had another parameter underneath in the main where it says mm -hmm. d foo, if we had, let's say, int uh, B and it equals uh, delta, um, and it, it's a parameter that accepts C2. Okay. Uh, does that mean you, we never hit that because we already hit the location? Correct. So here in main, we would have space for a local variable B, but we don't know what the value. Oops. We don't know what the value is yet. Okay. Right, because we haven't hit this function. But we know that that space exists for that. There is a local variable called b here. So on the main, do we leave d empty then? Because yep. we haven't returned anything. Exactly. Okay. So the stack has those three calls for foo? Mm-hmm. So we have to call through? Yep. Yeah, because so, right, because main called foo, which called foo, which called foo, and none of these functions has returned yet. Okay. So if this function were to return and then we were to print out the stack, Right, we'd only print out these two. Or if these were switched and we called delta, delta did something, and then we called these foo, delta wouldn't be on the stack because it's not called. Right, so it's kind of like if you walked up from this location here and said, okay, who called me, who called me, who called me, all, everything there should be on the stack. So let's say instead of having, in, a C. having foo being called within foo again, we would just have return instead of else, uh, mm -hmm. or instead of if foo mm -hmm. b, we just go return, mm -hmm. and then else return in the location one. If we had int d foo, and then int uh, b foo again with a different number, and then would we not care unle about those stacks that we hit until we exactly? Exactly, hit? wherever you want to print out the stack at that point, only those functions that are on that stack matter. Okay. So I could have a printf. I could print out a here. I could do whatever I wanted in any of the any function calls here, and they may change these values. So you need to make sure you can you <laughs> execute them and update the values correctly. But these don't change the stack at this point here, because they execute, they change the stack, and then they return, and that goes away. So All we, that just, we can away. just x them out and not show exactly. So if we on the test, for example, we had it where you had that kind of mentality where the mm -hmm. program goes that direction, 
if we wrote everything out but we just X'd out the ones that we don't need, that's considered fine? Or should we just have the final result? I would probably, I would do that. That's a good way to show your work. Uh -huh. And I would also then have your final one and you mark clearly, like, this is the final. Always, oh, okay. always think about who's grading your yeah. paper and how much extra work it would be. Yes. If it's looking like yes. that versus Because if it's like then you're like, well, but I really meant that this one was the one I wanted or something, or if those marks got like a little bit. Uh, you, people do crazy things, right? If I went, got like that right, and now you're like, well, but that's, fr I really meant that that should be gone, but it, whatever, it could be all kinds of, all kinds of ambiguity that we want to reduce. So okay. yeah, if you want like scrap, like work here, do this, do this, and then be like, like or even you could do something like final answer, and then like a stack. And, and then whatever. Be really whatever. nice and leave us yes. plenty of room to do that. Yeah, 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 something like that. Right. Okay. A anything to make it clear that like this is your answer. That makes sense. But like, also when you do this, be careful, because I see some people and it kills me where like they do this, but then they mess up the copy here oh. um, and then lose points for that. Like, kills me, but like this, you're saying, telling me that, that, that that's your answer, right? So like, I, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So for the midterm, what we have to account for is local variables, mm -hmm. parameters, mm -hmm. and anything else that we have to explicitly put onto the frame. Oh, when you're drawing the stacks like this? Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think I'd have you do like EVPs, save EVPs, but you should be able to answer questions about those things. If I ask you questions about EVPs or instruction parameters. Can you quickly change the example so that int b is a pointer? Sure. And then go through how the stack might look a little different. Okay. You don't have to go through three. Right, right, right. We'll just, you know, do, just we'll one, do one. I, one would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll keep that up. Unless you're not, yeah. unless that's not fair game for the exam. If it's not fair game. Of course it's fair game for the exam. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I just don't want to do it because I'm worried that you'll, uh, that's too now, close. Now, now that we'll do that's too, too well close the to the exam. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that you said as long as we create it, then that doesn't matter, right? That's true. Unless I saw the exam. And already. you want us to do well. In the exam, <laughs> right? I do want you. To <laughs> that's definitely true. But I don't want you to do well in the exam because I gave you the exam <laughs> and you studied exactly what was on it, right? So these things you got to imagine, like, you know, there's the whole scope of the class is this big nebulous space. I can only test on a certain part, but you don't know exactly which part because I want you to know everything. But I can't enforce that you know everything because the test would be too long. So I have to not tell you exactly what I'm testing so that we'll study everything. You don't necessarily have to test us on generalization. So this would be generalizing the concepts. Uh, we didn't well, it's just a different application. But <laughs> so exactly. Actually, this is a really good question because it's uh, it does get into a lot of other things we talked about. Okay, so I have B. So let's say I have like before in A is equal to zero, and then I have a is equal to like A plus star B, and then star B is equal to A, return A. Something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's great. It's be super simple, so we'll print out the stack here. Yeah. Oh, the other nice thing with this, with like learning this, helps actually debugging, because when you're in any good debugger, you can uh, you can print out the stack trace of function calls, and you can actually, if you're debugging in here, you can say go up to the next function, inspect the variables, go up to the next function, inspect the variables, and go back down. So you can see kind of where the problem is uh, in there. So this is actually really handy. Okay, so we have main. This I think we can keep the same, right? Uh, almost. You need C uh, I think I need an address of. Yeah, I could do C plus A, but or C, or just C. Yeah, I like that because we're using that one. Okay, so let's print out the stack here. <coughs> okay, so we have main. Is main the first function frame? Yes. Okay, we have main. We have C. Zero, five, ten. Then we have some D we don't know yet. And now we call function foo, right? Okay. 
But now we gotta be so we have C A, so what's A? Two. Exactly. So C two is this is ten. But now we're taking the address of C two. So it's gonna give us the address of uh, C10. So, yeah, if I didn't tell you a specific address, I would probably do it symbolically. So you could say you would give it a location. Uh, I would say address of C2 is OX100. So then, so now I have function foo, it has one parameter b, what's the value in b? Oh, would it be just the memory location? Which is? OX100. Yeah. Right, it's a pointer. We know the value that's inside the pointer is an address to some memory. And that's all that's all pointers are. And then we have A is ten. A is zero. And that's all that. So this would be foo. So then we say A is equal to zero. A plus star B. So A is zero. What's star B? Ten. Ten? So zero plus ten is ten. So I'm gonna put ten here. Then I say star B is equal to A. So A, the R value is 10. Where's the location, star B? Here. So, oh man, it's the same. Well, okay. Plus one, just now. Plus one, or uh, plus yeah. one. Okay, so this is 10 plus one is 11. So we're gonna take 11 and put it at the location associated with star B. So star B points here. So this would change this to be 11. And that would be the stack right here. Okay. Now, C decal is different, and you said you might may or may not test on it. With C decal, basically, it'd kind of be flipped, wouldn't it? Like, B would actually be at the bottom, and A would actually be at the top if we were using C decal? Uh, no, the parameters are always. In C decal, the parameters are always on top because the calling function pushes the parameters. Right. So they have to be above the local parameters. Well, yeah, so technically B would be above the line for foo, right? Uh. Because you're pushing it from main. Main, yeah, it's kind of a semantic thing. To me, I like to think of like who's responsible for that memory. So as soon as main calls foo, even though main like created the space for that memory, it's really foo's responsibility. Like that. Foo can access that memory. Let's put it, put it that way, right? Foo can get to that parameter but even it though. Does it based off the ESP, right? Uh, off of the base pointer, yes. Oh, sorry, base pointer. Yeah, so technically the base pointer points here. Oh well, it's here. the ESP that moves, and then yes. right, then it exactly. becomes the base pointer for the exactly. second. Exactly. So the e but EBP is here, exactly. So to go get local variables, you go minus, and to go get parameters, you go plus, because in here there's also saved base pointer and saved instructor pointer. Right. Um, so that's why you got to go. So those are all I would say part of Foo's those frame. As part of Foo, even though they're getting pushed from me, exactly. kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I that's. Did all, I did this originally for the homework, trying to do all of that, and so it looks very different from yeah. this answer. Yeah. Similar. Just similar, but different. Mm -hmm. Different what if, format. What if B was star star? If B was star star, mm -hmm. uh, what would that be error? It would be an error because this is. Uh, int star. Right, so that'd be a type error. So you have to. Yeah, you'd have to define a pointer, an int star, and then take that address operator okay. and pass it in there. Or pass in, define an int star star and pass that in. <laughs> More questions on stack stuff before we switch over to Hindley Milner type inference? Are you saying that because you created yeah, it? Yeah, I was just thinking Both that. of them? <laughs> this, this doesn't really have to do with stacks, per se, as much as uh, some clarification between the difference of, you know, by reference, name. 
It was such a good example for that before we changed it, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can maybe change it back. Um, so the, I mean, it's it, the only, well, there's a couple tricky things. I mean, pass by value is very, right, it's what you're used to, right? The value is copied. And that's the thing here that you got to make sure is like on all of these, you're passing B to foo, which makes a new copy of a new value B in that frame and copies that value there. Pass by reference means that you are, so probably the best way I you're think is similar to the second example, aren't you? You're yeah, like it's kind of the, the box circle diagrams. So to think like, I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Okay, in pass by value, you make a new box. So every time this function is called, right here, we call c of a. So here, pass by value, right, c of a is, so c of a is a box and 0, 1, 2 is 10. So that value 10 gets copied on function invocation here so that all these b's reference that 10. So this is completely separate from our copy of so we, we have a box, and let's say it's a really big box, because it has the values 0, 5, and 10, right? So this is take the value associated with C2, which is 10. Uh, the value associated with C2, which is 10. Copy that and put that into B's box. So these are completely separate, right? So when we set B is equal to A plus 1, it changes this, but it doesn't change C at all. Okay. So pass by value. Now pass by reference. The difference is, what we say is B, instead of having its own box, is bound to what we pass in. So it says, okay, well C2, so I'm going to draw a different box, like C bracket 2, okay, is bound to a box that has the value 10, right? So in pass by reference, what I'm doing is I'm binding B to that location. So the location I pass in is C2, which is that same thing in here. I'm drawing them separately because it's kind of hard to, to do it like that. Um, so on function invocation, B just gets bound here. Mm -hmm. So that way, every time this B is referenced, we say B, OK, look up B. What's the value associated with B? Well, it's 10. And here, set the value of A plus 1, take the value A plus 1, set it to the location. Put it in the value of the location associated with B. Well, the location associated with B is here. So we should update this. Put a 1 there. Boom. And this goes away. That B disappears. right? But that memory was outside. So that's why this updates the value outside here. And what about pass by name? Pass by name is trickier in that we don't actually evaluate this expression to get an L value or an R value, what we do is we look at all of the uses of the formal parameter. So here's formal parameter, formal parameter, formal parameter. And what we do, so we do, we do scoping rules here at the invocation. So we say this C is bound to this C, and this A is bound to this global A, right? So that's where, I mean, that's statically where these are. That's how we've been executing it, right? So when we invoke foo and we say, okay, call foo, uh, do pass by name. So we, we change all of these underscore b's, or these b's with an underscore under them, with this expression, just as if this expression executed right here. So we, we basically execute an equivalent foo where we have int a is spaces. Same thing is problematic, though. Int a is equal to 0. A is equal to A plus C bracket A plus C bracket A. So what do all of these A's refer to? The, lo the local, right? Exactly like we've been doing it. So these are all scoped to this local A. Boom, boom, boom. Pass by name does not change any of that. So all of these A's still reference that one. And all of these expressions are exactly as if they were executed here at function invocation. 
So now what is this A reference? The global. The global A, exactly. Boom. And this C? The C from me. Exactly, just like here. So it's just as if it's executing here, same scoping rules and everything, but it executes for each time you see the formal parameter here. So this would pass in, uh, so I think it would be actually the same as pass by value, so it changes it to 11. But the point is that you're changing, you're, you're calling, executing that expression every time. Oh yeah, because we didn't change the... the we didn't change the A, global the global A. a. Exactly, because we can't, because we defined a local A, <laughs> which is good. But you could do something like uh, A plus plus, right? Just something crazy like that. Now this would be every time you did it, it would change A, this global A. Can you get it out of you get a index? Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that because I hate the semantics of this operator. the other way, plus plus a? Yeah, exactly. You could, yes. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I think we're going to move on to Hindley-Milner type inference, if that's good. Uh, but first, let's pause this so somebody can create an example.